okay so uh, in the last two semesters of your uh, graduation you all have studied regarding uh, this group of animals that is a non cardata in two parts uh, we have studied right um, one is non cardata part 1 and uh, non cardata part 2 so i'm going a little slow because many of them are joining now okay let us get started so as i have told you all in the previous two semesters you have been learning regarding the non cardates as you all know very well regarding the classification of the entire uh, living world so so you can see in the introduction slide so let us briefly discuss regarding what have we studied in the last two semesters so in pu itself you all are aware that the entire living world has been classified into five kingdoms right so which are the five kingdoms you all are aware of it right so which are the five kingdoms so if you remember so uh, some of you are joining still So the voice breakage will be due to the network problem so you can hear sit in a place where there is proper network hope others are hearing properly So in the five kingdom classification of uh, Whitaker, so we are going to deal with the kingdom Animalia. So the Animalia has been further divided into two groups. One is chordates and the non chordates, right? Still joining. I asked you to join soon. So mute once you join. 
Monica MS. Yes. Okay. Right. So, in the five kingdom classification of the Whitaker, there is kingdom Animalia. The kingdom Animalia has been further divided into the chordates and non chordates. Correct. Now, the non chordates are the invertebrate phyla, if you remember. So, how many are there? So, as I have shown here, there are nine invertebrate phyla and there is phylum chordata. Okay. Now, so if you look at this uh, flow chart, hope everyone are able to see this flow chart. So, you can see the kingdom Animalia has been. Uh, further divided based on different criteria like uh, levels of organization, symmetry, and the uh, body cavity. So all of you are aware of that coelom, the body cavity. Now there are two levels of organization. One is a cellular grade of organization where only <clears throat> the entire animal body is just nothing but a group of cells, right? So which is a phylum where there is a group of animals representing the uh, a group of cells representing the animals that is the phylum porifera right so poriferans and then um, the next grade of organization is either tissue grade organ grade or organ system grade of organization right so now this uh, further organization that we have seen it has been further divided into two types number one the radial symmetry and the bilateral symmetry so what is symmetry the basic terminology that you should know the symmetry is the arrangement of organs around an imaginary axis. So, what kind of uh, arrangement we can see in each animal that is what is called as the symmetry. So, now basically, there are two important symmetries one is a radial symmetry and a bilateral symmetry. There are two important phylums that represent the radial symmetry they are the cylindrates, uh, also known as what? Nidarians um, and the minor phyla that is the uh, Tenophora. Okay, so now again in the bilateral symmetry. Let us come to the body cavities and I see the number of germ layers. If you remember the ectoderm, mesoderm, and the endoderm. There are the different uh, germ layers: the ectoderm, mesoderm, and the endoderm. So some of them do not uh, possess the mesoderm. They are known as the diploblastic animals. And uh, some of them possess the three germ layers that is ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Such organisms are known as the triploblastic animals, right? Right. Okay. So, Ankita CR, hope you are hearing me. Right. Um, so there are triploblastic and diploblastic animals. Now, when three germ layers came into picture, as the animal complexity started uh, increasing, now we came across formation of uh, body cavity. So the mesoderm split to form the body cavity. Some of them do not possess body cavity, even though they are having uh, three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, even though being triploblastic, some of them do not possess a body cavity. Such organisms are known as the acelomate animals, and uh, the phylum that represents uh, them is the platyalminthes. What are they commonly known as? They are known as the flatworms, right? And in case of uh, nematodes or the ascalminthes, uh, if you see, the body cavity, even though present, it is not lined on either side by the mesoderm. A true body cavity is always lined on either side by the mesoderm. But in case of nematodes, we see the mesoderm forming the pouches. So, such a case, it is known as the uh, false coelom. Uh, such organisms, we term them as pseudo coelomates. Okay. Then, there is true coelom formation in higher 
organisms here phyla after ascalmenthes if you remember all the nine phyla so after ascalmenthes it is annelida arthropoda mollusca echinoderms and hemichordates and with respect to the chordates there is one phyla that is phylum chordata all of them do possess the true coelho okay so this is a brief a uh, classification chart so that we have to go through now let us come to this uh, group of organisms which comes before uh, uh, pro uh, poriferans that is the protozoa so protozoa we used to consider before as a phylum but now the protozoans they themselves form a kingdom right so now see here protozoans what kind of organisms they are they are very primitive organisms so there are few uh, points to be uh, revised uh, regarding the protozoans you can see that the they are unicellular eukaryotic organisms right so regarding the carrion we all have an idea so carrion means nucleus so in case of uh, some organisms the nucleus or the genetic material that is present at the uh, center will not be bound by a nuclear membrane okay so in such cases um they are known as the they are known as the uh, prokaryotes so bacteria kingdom monera consists of them bacteria come under them so we are not talking about them so just after the kingdom monera so the kingdom protista consists of the protozoans and some other organisms so regarding the protozoans since their genetic material is a uh, well uh, the genetic material is well present not your voice ramya sandhya uh, farzana and uh, usma so you are not able to hear my voice you are saying so but if your network is proper definitely you will hear my voice hope others are hearing me sit in a place where there is proper network okay so so for the protozoans possess um a true nucleus that means the genetic material is well surrounded by a nuclear brain right so and they have say because in case of protozoans a single animal a single cell itself is an animal there is physiological division of labor which is subcellular that means within a cell there is physiological division of uh, labor okay um, so that means there is a different location where there is excretion taking place or uh, the digestion taking place so in the cell cytoplasm itself there are different locations okay so that is what uh, we mean by subcellular physiological division of labor which is a very unique uh, character with respect to the protozoans and uh, we all know very well regarding the locomotory organs of the and uh, locomotory organs of the pis uh, protozoans so which are they so can you just answer which are the locomotory organs so the pseudopodia cilia and the flagella so these are the locomotory organs so that we can um come across in case of uh, protozoans so apart from that So if you come across the nutrition in protozoa, so they have a holozoic, holophytic, or saprozoic, parasitic type of nutrition. Holozoic means completely animal-like uh, nutrition. Holophytic means uh, the plant-like nutrition. Some of them, like the uh, euglena, may have uh, the photosynthetic ability. Some of the protozoans, so they have the ability to lavanya and uh, Ankita joining now. So the next time when I call up for a meeting, please make sure fifteen minutes before only you can just get admitted, so that you won't miss any part of the class. Right. So that is regarding the nutrition and saprozoic nutrition. Uh, the many protozoans they play a role in decaying the material. organic matter so they act on the dead and decaying 
uh, material and uh, they thrive on that. That is what is saprozoic nutrition and uh, parasitic nutrition. You, uh, you all are very well aware of the parasitic forms of the protozoans. So just uh, think of which is the parasitic form of the protozoan. Can you answer? The parasitic form of the protozoan is very well known uh, parasitic form that is a plasmodium, right? So fine. So with respect to the excretion in protozoans, the excretory organ, I told you there are different locations in the uh, cell cytoplasm itself, which uh, finds their role. So one of such organ is contractile vacuole, so which helps in both excretion and the respiration, fine. And with respect to the reproduction, with respect to the reproduction, um, there are three important methods. There is fission, um, asexual, with respect to reproduction, there are two important types, all of you are aware of that. One is uh, sexual reproduction and uh, asexual reproduction sexual and asexual reproduction one of the type of asexual reproduction is the vision that may be binary vision or the multiple vision and there is budding budding is a type of asexual reproduction and uh, in some forms like paramecium we do come across a sexual form of a primitive sexual form of uh, reproduction so that is what is known as the uh, conjugation Right. Now, so after protozoans, so if you uh, look at this picture, you can uh, visualize the protozoans. Uh, just try to name them when you look at them. Right. The next phylum, so from here, we are going to start the true invertebrate phyla. The next phylum that is the Phylum Orifera. So, as you all know, what is a common name? Common name of uh, phylum Orifera. Hope you all know that they are pore pairing organisms, right? So, poriferans and they are commonly known as sponges, right? Sponges. So, these are the first group of multicellular organisms, right? They are uh, different. So, in case of protozoans, there is a single cell performing all the functions, but here you can see there is a different cell to perform different functions, right? And that is why they have cellular grade of organization. What are they named as the pores on the body of uh, the sponges? They are known as the ostia, right? And the body is supported by skeletal structures. So skeletal structure is very important to maintain the shape of the body. Uh, so um, they're... Uh, for structural formation. So for that, there are skeletal structures that are present in the sponges, which help in the supporting the body. So they are called as the um, spicules. Good. So some of you are putting the answers in the chat box. Uh, it's good. Then, um, the next one is the another important uh, uh, term that I have chosen for the revision is the gemmules. So if you can just uh, think of the gemmules, these are the, yes, can you answer? These are the asexual, uh, the reproductive uh, structures, right? Asexual reproductive structures that are uh, Yes, uh, yes, reproductive, Shirisha is answering reproductive structure. Um, they are asexual reproductive structures so formed during, when they are formed, the gemmules are usually formed during the unfavorable conditions, correct? Unfavorable conditions they are formed. So whenever there is the shortage of water or something like that in the pond where they are living um, in that case there is formation of the uh, gemmules to protect the reproductive cells and once the favorable situations come up the cells start uh, reproducing 
to produce the sponges, right? Okay, so these three points, we shall go to the next phylum that is, so yes, you can look at this picture, beautiful sponges um, are there. Okay, so just go through this picture. Yes, the next uh, phylum of invertebrates is the cylindrate. Quickly, can you, can some of you type what is the other name for the phylum cylindrate in the chat box? Quick. Type in the chat box what is the other name for uh, phylum cylindrata? Yes, yes, Shravani, Nandu answering. Nidaria, it's not Tinidia, Tinidia is the wrong word. Manasa, it's not Tinidia, Tinidia is a word related to the gills right so we shall come to that later so they are known as the nidarians right so can you tell me why they are called nidarians any idea everyone can type an answer don't think if some one answers that is fine so everyone can type in the chat box and answer the questions that i'm asking that it be an interactive class why they are called nidarians Anyone? Very good. Nandu is answering uh, that they have a kind of cells known as the nidoblasts. So because of that, because of that, we uh, we call yes, because of that we call the cylindrates as nidarians also, right? Uh, which is the most beautiful animal in cylindrates which is very active yes very interesting uh, kind of animal fine you can put that in the chat box so they are good yes yes that is the animal i was talking about of course animals are also very uh, beautiful animals so cylindrates they add uh, uh, beauty to the um, habitat where they are uh, living aurelia aurelia very good aurelia is the scientific name of uh, jellyfish okay so let us come to a few points that i have chosen in cylindrata the radial symmetry symmetry means we have discussed already in the chart so where I have told you, the symmetry means arrangement of organs around the imaginary axis. So in case of radial symmetry, where the arrangement of organs in the body is such that so you can divide the body into two equal halves in any plane. So that is what is the radial symmetry. So from here, the organism in case of phylum cylindrata, they have radial symmetry. And here there are group of cells the previous uh, previous phylum if you see i told you there is each cell to perform a particular function so but in case of salient rates we have a group of cells performing a specific function and what is a group of cells known as ultimately it is known as uh, tissue and the next word that you are seeing i already spoke about there are formation of the germ layers if there are two germ layers the organism is known as uh, diploblastic and if on if there is mesoderm in between ectoderm and uh, endoderm they are known as the triploblastic organisms right so that means we need to understand the cell traits of the diploblastic animals can you can you all uh, tell me what is that a layer present between ectoderm and uh, endoderm in cell trait can anybody answer the layer that is present between ectoderm and uh, endoderm in cylindrates. No, they are diploblastic. I already told you the mesoderm is absent. Very good. Shirisha got the right answer. That is, sorry, Afna. Afshan got the right answer. Yes, yes. Many of you are answering Sushma Manas and all. So that is a mesoglia. Okay, so don't mistake 
for a mesoderm. Mesoderm is not formed in case of uh, cylindrate. That's an important point. These points, especially asked in uh, mm. the MCQ based examinations, which you are going to face, maybe the PG entrance examination or the CSI or NET examination or any uh, scientist examination that you're going to face. Okay, so we shall come to the questions based on this later on. Uh, so, cylindrates are the diploblastic animals, right? And they have a cavity. So, if you are uh, the, they have a cavity. Remember, it's not coelom. It is not coelom, right? So, in case of uh, the cylindrate, the cavity that is present in the organism is known as gastrovascular cavity, right? And these are the cells I was talking about. Why they are known as the why they are known as the Nidarians, as they are known as the nematocysts or nidocytes. So both the terms are correct. And economically, uh, so there is one class of uh, cylindrates. I uh, hope all of you know the classes of uh, cylindrates. Which class forms the corals? Can anybody answer? Among cylindrates, which class? forms the corals any answer no it's not polyps class i'm asking classification class no which class of cylindrates form corals recently it was a question mcq question asked in a competitive exam No, scyphozoans do not form corals. Yes, correct. Hajira got the right answer. They are the Shirish also answering. They are the anthozoans, right? So they form the corals. Regarding the corals, you all know, I believe, the shell after the organism's death get deposited, forming the corals, right? So, so that is a brief information regarding the cylindrates so now you can just look at this picture i told you that's the interesting animal of the cylindrates okay so let us come to the next group of organisms so i need not ask you which is a nice animal and all because most of them are parasites yes right so most of the helminths um, are the parasites. What's the common name? Common name of uh, platy helminths. Common name of platy helminths. Yes. Answer. Good. Yes. No, they are not known as round worms. They are known as the flat worms, right? The next phylum which we are going to discuss, they are known as the round bones. So whatever you know, you should answer. It is once you answer, if it is correct, fine. If it is wrong, you can just get corrected, right? So the platyhelminthes. So it's a one one special uh, development here from the cylindrates to the platyhelminthes is development of the third uh, germ layer. That is the the mesoderm. These are the first group of invertebrates to possess three germ layers, which are the three germ layers, sectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So remember, in case of cylindrates, there was no, there was no mesoderm, but here in helminths for the first time, you are going to have all the three germ layers. So if somebody asks which is the first phylum to possess all the three germ layers, it is the platy helminthes. Right. So what this is the first phylum also where you look at formation of the organs that is why we see here organ grade of organization okay so we so from protozoans to the um uh, towards the chordates in every phylum you're going to see the uh, development or complexities increasing in case of animals so um platyhelminthes many of them are uh, parasites i told you 
right? Is there any helmet which is a free living helmet? Can you answer? Free living flat worm. Can anybody answer which is a free living platy helmet? This. Yes. Good. So Chitra and Sushma are answering. It is planaria. Very good. Yes. So they have organ grade of organization. And again, because they have free germ layers, they are known as the triploblastic animals. And um, I told you another important point regarding the platy helminthus is even though being even though being triploblastic, they are the ones which do not possess a phylum. There is no body cavity in case of the platy helminthus. That is why they are known as the acylomate organisms. Why? Sometimes they may ask you why it is so. Because they the they simplistic nature of organization and many of them are parasites. So if you have learned regard many parasites have been learning, the parasites uh, try to have as simple body organization as possible, which is required for their habitat and mode of nutrition, right? Okay, so and uh, here we are going to have a definite head and tail formation, which we have not seen in other phyla, previous phyla. And here, because they are parasites, one important parasitic structures uh, that we see here, they are hooks and suckers, right? And yes, can you answer what is the function of flame cells in helminths? Yes, Farzana is saying she is not hearing. Sit in a place where there is proper network. Definitely you will hear. Yes, they are answering. It is the flame cells are helpful in excretion. So with respect to the um, with respect to osmoregulation is also the right term. Um, yes, um, they are hermaphrodites, right? What are they? What do you mean by that? Yes. What do you mean by hermaphrodite? Yes, give an example. Give an example for a hermaphrodite. Good. Can you give an helminth example? Platform. No, leech and earthworm, they are not elements. Very good. Um, the Afshan is answering. Afshan, Sujita, and the, yes, all of you are answering. Mm, the right, right, yes, correct. Right. Okay, so that is regarding the. Uh, platforms. So these are the three platforms. One is planaria, liver fluke, and a tapeworm. Both liver fluke and tapeworm, they are hermaphrodites, right? Yes, epistoma is also correct. Yes. Let us go to the next group of um, the invertebrates. They are known as nematoda. Can you give other name for nematodes? Other two names. One is a common name. Another one is a phylum name. Nematodes. Other name. Yes. Yes. Common name is round ones. Good. Uh, Skelment, this is the right answer. Um, hope all of you should participate when a question is asked. Make sure that you are typing in the chat box your answer. Okay, so these are the uh, nematodes, and they are commonly known as the round worms. Skelment, this is also another term for the nematodes. So actually it is strong as phylum askelmanthus and that, that in some books the classification says the class nematoda. So nothing to worry, nematodes and askelmanthus, they are the uh, same. Here one important uh, development is 
development of a true true siloam so from here we are um, going to have the formation of the uh, true siloam but uh, still here we do not include the round worms and our u siloamate animals instead we put them under pseudo siloamate animals right so pseudo siloamate animals uh, because here the mesoderm do not surround the body cavity on either side instead there is formation of the mesodermal arches okay so that is why we call them as pseudo siloamate animals okay and for the first time here the mouth and anus complete a digestive system you can see in case of the nematodes okay so okay. the next important phylum which has many developments that is the annelida okay so the phylum annelida so these are the organisms for so the first time having metamorically segmented body metamerism or the true segmentation of the body started from phylum annelida and uh, with respect to the locomotory organs if you remember ct and uh, parapodia c Yes, sometimes due to the network issue, voice breaking will be there. It will be all right. Hope for that. Yes. Yes, there is some technical problem, so it got disconnected. Hope. Just a minute. Yes. So, Anilidins, are you all hearing me? Yes. It got disconnected. Again, I connected it. Yes. You are hearing? Yes, yes, fine. Okay, so hope uh, everyone are hearing me. So, silomic, uh, yes, locomotory organs we were discussing about. So, in earthworm, in graduation before, there used to be a uh, dissection class where, uh, yes, everyone are hearing. Uh, in graduation class, there used to be a dissection of the earthworm where we used to mount the seat and all. So, they are the uh, supportive structures that help in the locomotion and they are present on the parapodia uh, so help in the locomotion right now there is because there is formation of the true silome there is silomic fluid which is present in the body cavity uh, in the pouches and it possesses cells this is another uh, development and here for the first time uh, we can see there is a blood vascular system and moreover usually we see the blood vascular system only in chordates higher animals but one phylum uh, which is possessing close type of blood vascular system is the annelid remember so if someone asks you which is an invertebrate phyla that possesses close type of uh, blood vascular system the answer is anilida okay so anilida is nephridia is the term next term i am using can you tell me what is the function of nephridia yes put it in the chat box what is the function of nephridia yes fine hope all of you know that Shall we move to the next slide? Yes, these animals, you can name them also. Um, yes, Hirudinia, what is a common name? Hirudinia. <coughs> this is a Hirudinia, what is a common name? <coughs> Bleach, correct, yes. Ferritima, what's the common name? Ferritima. Yes, so you all have 
got it very good let us come to the next phylum what is very special regarding arthropods what is very striking feature of the arthropods ortho means what what is ortho meaning ortho means jointed correct a podo means an appendage this is a phylum possessing the jointed appendages correct um and we know very well it is the largest phylum largest group of animals and a kingdom animalia so which is the largest class under phylum arthropoda largest class under phylum arthropoda good yes yes perfect so it is the insecta class insecta so they are metamorphic segmentation already um, we have seen in case of annelidans it has been well advanced in case of the arthropod phyla so refer so from arthropods in the last semester till now what we have discussed is it is from the first semester invertebrate part 1 now it is the second semester where we are going to uh, discuss about the arthropod onwards right for the first time there is clear cut formation of head thorax and uh, uh abdomen in case of the arthropods yes can you answer green gland function green gland and malpighian tubules what is their function yes correct excretion is the function correct there are different types of uh, mouth parts with respect to arthropods because it is the largest group of uh, organisms many of them are well um, many of them are well adapted to different habitats um because of that their organs or structure body structures also should get adapted one of the very well adapted uh, body structure is the mouth parts right yeah so for example in honey bee it is different in butterfly it is different in mosquito it is different right so different types which are they which are different types of mouth parts and arthropods can you name some <clears throat> what kind we see in case of mosquito mosquito type of mouth parts in mosquito any answer yes it is is a scientific name i am asking what type of mouth parts no the you are giving the parts of the mouth parts different parts that are present in the yes sucking type before sucking what they do piercing and sucking type of mouth parts we see is that right piercing and sucking type of mouth parts and in case of butterfly we see no mandibles yes piercing and sucking type lapping type we see okay so for that is the different uh, just to remind you regarding there are different type of mouth parts and here you can see there is um, there is open circulatory system previously in annelida there was closed circulatory system even though being higher phyla than annelida arthropods have um, yes lapping siphoning type correct honey bee chewing lapping correct yes open circulatory system we see what do you mean by that open circulatory system what do you mean by open circulatory system where the body fluids flow through no blood pump of the out of the heart no no open circulatory system means the blood flows through the blood sinuses there are spaces in the body yes yes organs are suspended in the blood it's right answer 
series of vessels, not vessels. They are the they are known as the sinuses, blood sinuses. They are known as okay. So that kind of uh, open circulatory system we see in case of the arthropods, right? And what about the respiratory organs? Gills, trachea, book lungs. Uh, these are the respiratory organs. Many points are there. Just briefly, we shall discuss. These are the different uh, group of. Yes, Suchitra says blood sinuses are hemocytes. That is the right answer. Um, so these are the different arthropods. The next group of uh, animals, it is a phylum, mollusca. What do we call them commonly? Common name for phylum mollusca. Shelled animals is um, soft bodied animals. Both are correct. Both soft bodied shelled animals they are. So here again, we don't see the segmentation. They have unsegmented uh, body. The division of the body is uh, slightly different here from the arthropods. Here you can see head, mantle, foot, and visceral mass. The visceral mass surrounded by mantle. And it is in turn surrounded by a calcareous shell, right? Um, these are the animals that secrete the pearl, right? Now, which part of the molluscan animal secrete the pearl? Any idea? Very good. Shrauni, give the right answer. It is the mantle. Nacre is the material secreted by it. Mantle is the right answer. Shell, there are different shells you have seen in the practicals. What is radula? What is radula? Yes, everyone should answer. What is radula? Mouth part, any other answer? In locomotion, no wrong chewing part, no very good. Nandu gave the right answer. It's a rasping organ. Radula is a rasping organ present near the mouth or the pharynx. Okay, so so these are the molluscan animals. You can name them octopus, phyla, limax, mytilus. Union, rasping organ, correct. Which is the molluscan which forms the pearl? Pearl forming molluscan. Pearl forming molluscan. No, it's not union. Pearl forming molluscan. Good. Pinctada, pearl oyster is the common name. Pinctada vulgaris, the right answer. It is the pearl forming oyster. Okay. Good. Yes. Now let us go to the next phylum and the invertebrates that is the echinoderms. Okay. Echinome. Echinos means what? Spiny, right answer. Derma means? So what is the common name? Spiny skinned animals. Echinoderms are the spiny skinned animals. So here again, they are showing radial symmetry. So previous ones, they as not spiny skinned animals, right? Spiny bodied. The better word is spiny skin. Okay. So here again we see the radial symmetry, especially which is animal um, showing pentaradial symmetry among echinoderms. Pentaradial symmetry. Yes, starfish. What is the common scientific name of starfish? Scientific name of starfish.
what is the scientific name of uh, starfish asteria asteroidia asteroidia no it's a class asterius asterius is the uh, right word fine so people who are now joining just mute your audio yes they have a very very unique system in their arms that is known as the ambulacral system or the water vascular system um their radiating arms you can see the radiating canals very unique system we see in case of the uh, echinoderms what is the role of two feet it plays the role of locomotion okay so the last phylum under invertebrates it is the hemichordates can you give the example for hemichordate example for hemichordate good belano glasses any other example circle glasses good yes you are know very well very good verni form body so one interesting thing is before hemichordata was under phylum chordata right phylum chordata was divided into sub phyla so under protochordates uh, this was also one hemichordata now they have uh, placed it back into the mm, under invertebrates any idea why it is so why even though being having chordata word is being placed back in the invertebrates any idea due to presence of the notochord yes second point if you see they uh, previously they thought no since half of the body has notochord that is not right any other answer yes okay so in their uh, anterior uh, region they had a buccal diverticulum yes buccal diverticulum they had it was a small uh, rod like uh, structure previously the scientists thought it is a notochord so do you, do you notochord present only in the anterior head region so because of that um, they placed it under only part of the body had the notochord that is why they placed it under hemichord it later on they thought it is not notochord it is just a buccal diverticulum most of the uh, features they were there like that of the uh, invertebrates so because of that it was placed back into the um, invertebrate phyla especially under bonds classification bonds book we can see it is placed under invertebrates okay and there is proboscis gland for excretion the larva of blanus glasses is known as the tornaria larva got it so this is the picture now after invertebrates the next important uh, phylum is the chordates the right uh, term is phylum chordata chordata is a phylum and so these are the ones which possess a uh, notochord right notochord is present and there are three important chordate characters which you can see on the screen one is presence of the notochord second one is presence of the dorsal hollow nerve cord because the nerve cord is solid in case of invertebrates here you can see the notochord being hollow and it is present on the dorsal side there is notochord appearance of the notochord for the first time right and there are also slits openings on the pharynx which helps in the uh, the filter feeding and the respiration that is uh, the pharyngeal gill slits okay so presence of notochord dorsal hollow nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slits these are known as the basic chordate character any animal having these three character we place them under chordates the animals which do not possess these three characters they are placed 
and the invertebrates are the non chordates okay now the phylum chordata is further subdivided into three important subphyla durochordata um cephalochordata and vertebrata right so which is the example for durochordates can you salpa fine doliolum then a cedia correct okay so why do we call them urochordates <coughs> why do we call them urochordates no answer <clears throat> uros means tail yes ascidian larval tail very good that's the right answer uh, good now oh, the possess tunic um that is a body cover that is fine uh, but uh, urochordate word has been derived because only the larval form has the notochord in the tail that gets disappeared in the adult so that is through retrogressive metamorphosis one of the basic very unique uh, character that we see in case of the um, chordates cephalochordata example cephalochordates no lamprey is not the answer branchiostoma right this other name no fish is wrong answer cephalochordata amphioxus right amphioxus is the answer now let us come to the vertebrates is yes, these are the cartoonic pictures just to show c squared c squared fine okay so amphioxus is the right answer so the next uh, subphylum is the vertebrates so we call them as vertebrates because here the notochord gets replaced with a vertebral column the vertebral column may be made up of um, cartilage or it may be bony based on that different groups of vertebrates we have so you can see the first point there notochord gets replaced by vertebral column and remember it's the largest chordate subphylum among the three unique chordates of cephalochordate and the vertebrate it is the largest one and this again the um, subphylum vertebrata is further divided into two groups that is ignatha and the gnatho stomata gnathos means what gnathos means gnatha means jaw jaw is the right answer ignatha lacks jaw and uh, gnatho stomata they possess the jaws yes ignatha has two classes one is astracodermy extinct group this is and the cyclostomata they are present and in the lab also you have seen these animals which are the animals you have seen under cyclostomata the animals that are that you have seen in the lab which comes under cyclostomes which are they No answer. Correct. Yes, lamprey is the right answer. Good. Hagfish and lamprey is the right answer. Yes, the division gnathos tomata. Division A gnatha had cyclostomes that has stracoderms. Stracoderms are the extinct um, jawless organisms, and gnathos tomata under that 
the present living groups are cyclostomes hagfish and the lamprey are the examples for that remember now the next division is nathostomata these are the ones the mouth is surrounded by the jaws right it is further divided into two groups one is class physis super class physis and super class tetrapods right the super class physis as you all know it is uh, the group consisting of all kinds of fishes and the next one the super class tetrapoda it consists of four important classes amphibians reptilia apes and mammals okay so these are the four uh, different classes which come under the uh, super class tetrapods clear this is a brief uh, uh, classification of the entire animal kingdom now so these are the classes now why i have emphasized this point so here my next class will be on this group of animals where we also belong to which class we belong to among the tetrapods which class humans belong to mammalia so yes let us learn regarding us and our our close uh, ones and our class mammalia okay thank you very much and regarding the class you can post the comment in the chat box how many of you uh, heard some of you are still joining do not do this again okay so hope this class was very much helpful to you um you can post your questions in the chat box if you have any doubts you can post in the chat box right now or uh, you cannot uh, do that now means you can post it in our whatsapp group also right yes any questions regarding the discussion that we had today so this is the entire revision of your uh, part 1 and uh, part 2 any questions you can post if you can post your comment also over the class how for you will to understand everything okay all of you fine so put your comments in the whatsapp group whoever attended the class all of you just say attended in the whatsapp group just put thumbs up and say attended in our uh, whatsapp group okay so so here i'm stopping the class um, so any queries you can post in the group or else just say you attended the class in the group so just to count how many of you attended okay thank you all